So we're asked to determine the force in three members, EF, EP and LK, of the Baltimore Bridge Truss, and we need to state whether those members are intentional compression. So if we look at it, the three members that we're asked to find is EF, EP and LK. So you can see that those three are all kind of located together and they're all near the center of the truss. So probably the easiest way to approach this question would be with method of sections. And if we take one cut through the truss here, we should be able to um, basically do one method of sections to be able to solve. So in order to get to that point, the first thing that we need to do is solve for at least one set of the reactions. So when we take a cut through the truss here, we're going to need to redraw either the left hand side or the right hand side of the um, diagram. And whatever side we choose, we need to know what the reactions are um, on either side. So in order to get there, let's draw our overall free body diagram. So I've copied down the shape of the truss here. So the first thing I'll add on is all these external forces. So we have quite a few. So we've got two kilonewtons, five kilonewtons, three and two. And then the other thing we need to add on is the support reactions. So at A here, we have a pin, which means we need a horizontal and a vertical force, which I'm calling AX and AY. And then at I here, we have a roller. So that means we have just the one reaction perpendicular to the surface. All right, so we can apply our equilibrium equations onto this diagram in order to figure out the unknowns. Um, if I take the right hand side of the truss, the only reaction I need is IY. So to get that, I might start by summing moments about this point on the end here, which is A. And remember, we're treating anti-clockwise as the positive direction. So AX and AY act through the point, which means that they're not going to contribute. So the next one we'll consider is the two kilonewtons. And we need to multiply it by the distance back to point A. And we can see up here that it tells us that um, it's a total of 16 meters, um, but basically we have eight bays in here separated by two meters each. So the distance between each pair of joints is going to be two meters. So what that means is the distance between A and C is going to be two plus two, which makes four. Um, this is going to be going clockwise about point A, so it's negative. The next one we have is five kilonewtons, and the distance is going to be two, four, six, eight. Again, it's negative because it's clockwise. We've then got three kilonewtons acting in an extra two meters, which makes it ten. Again, clockwise. We've then got two kilonewtons acting at another two away, so it's going to be twelve. Again, negative. And then finally, we have the reaction force on the end. It's at the total length, which is 16, and it's going the opposite direction, so it's going to be positive. So if you go through and solve for IY, it comes out to 6.375 kilonewtons. It's positive, which means direction was correct. All right, so we're now up to the point where I can actually just cut the truss, and if I take the right-hand side, I've already got the reaction. You could go back and get AX and AY and then take the left, um, but I guess it's an extra step. So where we want to cut is through the um, members that we're interested in finding the force of. So that's through these three here. Remember, for method of sections, you want to cut through a maximum of three unknowns, otherwise you're not going to be able to solve it directly. So that's equivalent to cutting through here on our um, overall free body diagram. So I'm going to take the right hand side, as I said. Okay. So if we redraw the free body diagram of just the right hand side. So carrying across the forces, so we've got 6.375. We've got two kilonewtons and we've got three kilonewtons and then we've cut through these three members and exposed the internal force. I'm going to draw them all in tension. This top one here, this is cut between L and K, so let's call this FLK. This next one here, which is on the diagonal, that's cut between E and P, so let's call it that. And finally, this bottom one, it cut between E and F. So we'll call it F, E, F. 
Now the other thing I'm going to need is the angle that this member here is at. You can get that quite easily off the diagram. If this is 2 meters and this is 2 meters like it tells us, then this is going to be a 45 degree triangle. So that means if I mark this angle in here, it's going to be 45 degrees. So now we just need to use our three equilibrium equations to be able to solve for the three unknowns. Now, you can do any order of them, um, but some of them are more convenient than others in terms of the simultaneous equations. So what I would suggest is the easiest one this time is um, probably something about this point at the top here. Um, that is point K. All right. The reason is um, both FLP and FEP act through that point. So they shouldn't contribute um, to the equation and it will just leave the one unknown. Um, another what, thing that you could do is if you sum down here at the point, um, this one here, whatever that one is, I think it might be E, um, again both of these act through the point so uh, they wouldn't contribute to the equation and you'd just be left with the one unknown. So either of those approaches is probably the best to start off with. So I said I'm going to sum about K to be equal to zero and neither of these appear. So let's start with the 6.375 force. The distance from its line of action back to k is going to be 2 plus 2, which makes 4. And this is going anti-clockwise, so it's going to be positive. We've then got the 2 kN force, but its line of action is going to back up through k. So again, it's not going to contribute to the equation because the distance is 0. We've then got the 3 kN force. And the distance from its line of action back to k is going to be 1 truss bay, so it's 2. And this one is going to try and push uh, anti-clockwise about k, so it should be positive. And then finally we have FEF. The distance that we need to multiply it by is going to be the distance from its line of action here back up to k, which is basically the height of the truss. So we can see that the height of the truss here is 4 meters. We then need to consider direction, and this is going to try and go clockwise about k, so it should be negative. So if we go through and solve for FEF, it comes to 7.875 kilonewtons. It comes out positive, which means the direction is correct. So we drew this pulling away from the joint, so it's in tension. Alright, so let's mark that in. So now we have our two other equilibrium equations to apply. So I might start with summing forces now in the y direction to be equal to zero. And from that we should be able to work out um, FEP. So in the y direction we have three kilonewtons going down. We have two kilonewtons going down. We have 6.375 going up. And we have the component of this going down. It's going to be, according to the angle, I've got there, cos. So if we go through and solve for FEP, I come to 1.94 kilonewtons. Again, it comes out positive, which means direction was correct, and we drew this pulling away from the joint, so that means it's in tension. All right, so we have one left, which we should be able to get from summing forces in X. So we have FLK in the negative direction, and we have part of this in the negative direction. Um, according to the angle there, it's going to be the sine part. We have this in the x direction as well, and it's negative, and these are all in y only, so they get neglected from it. So if we go through and solve for FLK, that's about negative 9.2 um, five, sorry, kilonewtons. And it comes out negative, which means the direction was incorrect. So it's actually going to be in compression. If we look at this, we drew it push, pulling away. So it's actually going to be pushing onto it. Oops. Um, 9.25. Cool. So now we're up to the point where we just need to go through and answer the question. So if we scroll up. So we decided that the um, FEF was 7.9 uh, 
Um, yep, we've got that and we've got it in tension. So that rules out this first one because that one's in compression. Next up we have FLK and we've said that this is 9.25 in compression. Um, so here we've got 9.25 which amounts to 9.3 in compression. These two are in tension so it can't be them. And then just to double check, FEP, 1.9 kilonewtons in tension. Yep, again we have that, rounding it, 1.9 kilonewtons tension. So that means that C is the correct answer. So that's all there is, and see you in another video.